There's a lot of uncertainty in Chinese manufacturing at the moment. In this episode of Straight From The Source, I interview three of my favorite suppliers and ask them the key questions we've all been thinking about, such as why are product costs so high? What are the suppliers doing about it in order to reduce the product costs? What can we do as e-commerce customers to improve our supply chain? How to develop the best products in 2022? Where and how to best communicate with suppliers? technological improvements are happening in manufacturing and how we can take advantage of it, plus much, much more. This is an episode you do not want to miss. Now, before we get into it, Straight From The Source is brought to you by our friends at Helium 10. And if you haven't heard, they are hosting the largest e-commerce event of 2022 called Sell and Scale Summit, which will be in Las Vegas, 19th to the 22nd of September. There'll be some massive speakers there, such as Gary V, and I'm lucky enough to be a speaker there as well. Uh, and if you are interested in attending this event, check the link in the description of this video, uh, where you can check out the event and the agenda and all the speakers. There's a lot more speakers yet to be announced as well. And there is a $100 discount code for you, which I'll just flash on the screen right here. So definitely check that out. Uh, and if you are attending the event, just let me know in the comments below, because what I want to do is organize a meetup uh, with you guys, anyone who is subscribed to the Source of Kian YouTube channel. If you want to meet up in Vegas, if you're attending the event, let me know. We'll do a little meetup. We'll do some fun things in Vegas. We'll talk supply chain, uh, and I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun as well. So definitely check out the link in the description below, and I look forward to seeing you in Vegas. Also, just a quick one, bear in mind that English is the second language for a lot of these suppliers, so sometimes they can speak quite slow. So if you do want to speed up this interview a little bit, just click the little settings wheel in the bottom right corner of your screen and you can watch this video in 1.25 or 1.5 times speed. And while you are down there, feel free to hit the like and the subscribe button down below so you can stay up to date on the latest of what is happening in China. Now, let's get to the interview. I would love to get your opinions and your thoughts. Like, what is your current analysis and current feeling about what's happening in the manufacturing industry in China right now? You know, there's a lot of challenges to do with uh, labor costs, raw material costs, shortages, lockdowns, and things like that. But just as like a broad picture, like what what are you seeing happening right now, and what is your overall feeling about the situation right now? It's a bit complicated to say that the, the last whole two years, including this year, is uh, unusual year. Uh, everything is unstable, we would have said that. Um, because compared to the normal years before the COVID, uh, which is everything is easier to be estimate, uh, you know, the delivery time, production time, uh, salary level, uh, transportation. But out of the COVID, everything is changing. And uh, so the situation is unstable and can quickly change from one side to the other side. It was very, very hard because all the customers realized that the price must go up. This is a general problem. But they did not know, they did not you know, know how much they will accept. And they didn't know if market can accept or not. So last autumn and last winter, and even worse is they cannot come to China, they cannot travel, we cannot come to them, they cannot come to us. So they, 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 some of the customers understand, some of like, oh, the customers don't understand. So it has been a very uh, tough time. We had to have a meetings, like a team meeting every week to talk to the customer, how to find a way. You know, it's interesting. I think the customers which have been to China have a better understanding of the difficulties that you're facing, right? But a customer who has never been to China before just thinks, okay, I want to order a backpack. Oh, why is it late? Like they don't understand that the zips come from YKK and, and the zipper factory is closed. They don't understand that the raw material factory is in a different province that has to travel here. And, you know, in, in the last couple of years, you know, with rising costs uh, and challenges in China, I think a lot of people maybe haven't paid enough attention on their supply chain, but now they have to really focus on supply chain to be like, right, where can I make some improvements here? Where can I save costs? You know, maybe use a smaller packaging. Maybe I need to calculate how to load the cartons in the container a little bit better maybe i need to maximize the space when i store the goods on the pallet anywhere where i can save you know one or two percent is valuable so that's what like the the customers have been doing i'm curious to know from your perspective as a manufacturer as an exporter of goods it's also been challenging for you because maybe the customer orders would become less during this period because the costs are rising. But what, what have you done as a manufacturer to be like, right, here's where I can get smarter. Here's where I can improve my supply chain. Here's where I can improve my systems. Um, anything you can do about, you know, um, reducing the product development time or using recycled materials or 
changing the packaging or simplifying products? Have you done anything in your supply chain to be like, right, here's now where we can improve to save a bit of cost and pass that on to the customer? Like this, what I want to say is uh, the most important thing is to find a right supplier. This is uh, the first thing to do and the most right thing to do is uh, find a uh, uh, right uh, supplier. This is uh, uh, the one. And uh, the second for the saving, uh, if we talk about saving now, you know, like the sea cost, uh, the sea flight is a very high cost, but you also can find some time you can, uh, together with uh, some others, uh, together, you, you do not need a full container, you just uh, can be a SEL like this kind to save your shipping costs. Also, if uh, like to USA, you have fast one and you have normal one, maybe you can get a normal one. Uh, recently, like Shanghai, it is broken down. So most is go to like uh, in Ningbo. In, uh, Ningbo, right? So the Ningbo's price is very high. So do you have any idea if you can make this a little bit later to ship out? That will be fine because uh, as we know that Shanghai will be uh, okay in just uh, like uh, one or two weeks later, that will be fine. The retail price is tough because uh, the food price in Europe is going up. The gas, the oil is going up. So the customer, the consumers don't have too much money to buy it. So they cannot afford to have a quickly a big change on retail price. So all we are doing with customers is trying to, trying to minimize the increase in power. And at the same time, if we cannot do that, we have to do some changes to lower down cost, you know, that if you keep this product same as before, of course, you need to have a 15% raise up price. Customer cannot accept because they have to add a surcharge on the shipping cost, which is uh, five to 10 times more than before. So all we do is we try to cut, take off something from the back to make it more simple. And then we keep the same price, something like that. So it's a kind of, you know, they have to add some value, like uh, recycle materials, uh, recycle uh, hand tape, poly bag. But on one, the other side, they have to take out something, you know, in order to keep, they, they have to add something, take out something, but they will try to control the price and the cost in an acceptable way. Mm. Make the products commercial, that when they arrive, in the mark in the shop that it can be sold in a good price and the okay price. Interesting. So the, the, to, to summarize, that was kind of like reduce the product development time, maybe just change some colors rather than making all these different features yeah. and changes to the product, uh, utilizing recycled materials and recycled hang tags to give it like an extra feature uh, to the product and then also simplifying the products as well. So that even though the costs have gone up, the, pro the cost of the product won't go up because you remove certain features. So at least you can keep it uh, at the same retail price. You know... Just for these years, the material price, uh, as you said, keep raising. This is true. And some um, accessory like uh, related to uh, plastic have been raised 30% more compared with the last year, even compared with the, uh, two, 2020. So I'm suggest is if you have ordered just the place soon, do not doubt your suppliers they charge your deposit because they they charge your deposit they pay to their supplier they get the goods quicker this also helpful to you some customers they they may be thinking that oh i can uh, take it a little longer but the trends have been passed yeah just these years um, i think the chinese manufacturer their day is very tough I can say because the shipment getting delayed because of the port things, because of material things. Some guys will have the cash flow. So they will can be take care of the guy who would love to pay the deposit first than the normal customer. How about in the sort of production of the goods, like maybe the materials, like, you know, if you're using cotton do you maybe switch a little bit more to polyester 
or maybe use a different type of packaging like maybe have your customers requested any changes to the product to reduce the cost or are your customers still happy to order the exact same product uh, for the material yes you can change it to, from cotton to microfiber that will be uh, have a, a lot save but uh, uh, what i find is uh, customs are more interested in new technologies like uh, recycle things like mm. how to provide the 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 as a good thing to the earth, like this kind of things that is a little more hot than saving costs from packaging or like this. Uh, so the more creative is is a bigger than safe, I think, I in, in area like this. Sure, and then out of interest, like if if a customer wants to maybe make their products more environmentally friendly or more recyclable or using better, more sustainable materials, what mm. would be the first step? Because you know they they would go to you to manufacture their products, but you then get your materials from the raw material factories. So mm. do you then just ask your raw material factories? We want to make use of sustainable materials or recycled materials and then do the raw material factories give you any certificates to show uh, or any videos or that you can demonstrate to the customer that this is a certified recycled material uh, uh like like what i do is uh, uh we have towers in normal material and recycled material uh for using it is all the same. You cannot find any different. So only only one thing different is uh, one is uh, certification, have certification, and the other one do not have. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the only thing is you need to ask your raw material factory to follow your your order to go strictly with. Uh, I need the 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 recycled one, not the normal one, and I need this beer. Uh, 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 certification that's, that's great so as you said the customer should not be able to feel the difference between the the recycled material yeah. and the normal the feeling should be the same and, and and i know that as well from from using the products as well but then the difference mm -hmm. is that one of them is much more uh, better for the environment and yeah. do you see much of a cost difference between the two materials like uh, recycled material and normal material is do you normal expect like 20% to 50%, it will be like this in raw material. But uh, when you use to whole one, uh, because the, the raw material is just a part of the products, uh, you have uh, you have work to do, and you have packages, uh, you have shipping, these, all these costs. Mm -hmm. Even your advertising for the final sales, right? Yeah. So this part is just a small part for raw materials. Maybe a, uh, uh, like uh, you use uh, one cent on the raw materials, and you can rise the final price you, in one dollar. But mm. uh, normally, uh, it will be like ten percent uh, or twenty percent over the pro products. Interesting, and th th that's a very good point as well. That in terms of the material cost of the product, it's maybe not the biggest cost of the product. In actual fact, it could be the labor cost uh, yeah. because yeah. The, the labor cost is actually increasing and from my understanding it's actually getting harder and harder to find factory workers because the market is changing in china you have a growing yeah, middle yeah. class you also have a lot of requirements for delivery drivers and maybe people feel more comfortable as a job delivering food rather than working in a factory so you have to pay the factory workers more to attract them to come to work so what what, what do you see in terms of labor cost like from now and like two years ago like how much has the labor cost gone up how challenging is it to find workers yes yeah. uh, like this question you know when i just walk in uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2009 that time i walked the uh, average payment is about 100 us dollar per month but wow. now it is about 1000 us dollar per month and wow. even you 1000 us dollar per month uh, that is uh, uh, when the, the the worker come they are all over 40 years old no young men mm. you know like uh, uh, the service like uh, if you are delivery you are a deliverer or you are a driver 
So the the uh, the uh, salary will be about also one thousand to two thousand US dollar per month. Like if you work hard, it can be two two thousand. But if you work uh, lazy, it will be like uh, one thousand, uh, like that uh, that that uh, average. So, mm-hmm. young man, don't don't think uh, that uh, uh, the factory is a uh, you know is a, a a place with freedom. They think uh, the factory is always. Uh, some black black place, you know, <laughs> the dark place, you know. Yeah, but <laughs> so. you know, it, it, it's really interesting because obviously you want workers to be paid an amount that they're comfortable with, but at the same time, the the customers which are manuf- are ordering from manufacturers also don't want their product price to be high, and they're always negotiating the price. We want the price down. We want the price down. But then, if you want that price so low, then you need the lower cost labor in order to get that low cost price. So it's, mm-hmm. it's a very, very challenging situation as the sort of labor cost increases, well, so will your product cost and then your sales will be less. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a very, very difficult thing to navigate. And I, and I think that to your point as well, that there's no longer the younger generations coming in and working the factories. Like when I was in China for the first time in 2010, there was a lot of young people, young energy in the factory. But now to your point, because China has grown so much and developed a much more of a middle class, there's a lot more jobs available, whether it be in a bar, nightclub, coffee shop, you know, delivery driver, like these jobs are available now, which weren't so much available, you know, 12, years ago so now you have to pay more and more and more and factories are also moving more inland in china into more rural areas factories used to be in the cities very close to the ports but now they keep moving more and more inland because the bigger jobs go to the cities and then the factories kind of go inland as well so it's quite challenging the most important thing is uh, the people in china now is not proud of worker they're not wow. proud to go to a factory Mm. Uh, this is uh, the most important thing that uh, you know a, pe- uh, a young man if he say I'm working in a factory that will be laughed maybe mm. they are not good as I'm a, a, a service guy in a restaurant even that will be better than your worker maybe like that so mm. after that uh, people don't want to go it's, it's interesting as well because Chinese culture is very much about, you know, like showing face and yeah. uh, people really care about, you know, what is their job, sometimes more over the salary when of the job. The first thing is ask, what, what do you do? Oh, yeah. you are, I don't want to speak to you. Even I, I, I'm a, a, a young man. I, I want to find a girlfriend. I can mm. only find her in the factory. When I go out, they so do not uh, date with me like that. Yeah. Because this, but, uh, I'm a loser, like. Yeah, but I, I, Andrew, you have no problem finding a girlfriend. I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you in China. <laughs> um, no, but th- 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 it's, it's a very interesting topic. Hey guys, just a quick one. If you are getting value from this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below so you can stay up to date on the latest of what's happening in China. And as I said, I hope to see you guys in Las Vegas at the Sell and Scale event, 19th to the 22nd of September. If you are interested in that, click the link in the description down below so you can see all the speakers and see the agenda. And remember, there's a $100 discount code there for you guys, but please get it before the event sells out. I wanna see you guys there. Now let's get back to the interviews. We kind of talked about material costs. We talked about labor costs. Now, as a factory boss, how do you now price your items? Because the the cost of what you have to pay for labor is changing. The exchange rates are changing. The material costs are changing. If I'm a customer and I come to you and I say, Andrew, I want to buy like 5,000 towels. What's your best price? And you tell me it's $5 per unit. And then I come to place the order like one month later, with the PO for $5 and you're like, actually the price has changed because the material cost 30 days ago is not the material cost today. Like, how do you, because like when we were doing business together, like if you give me a price, that price is valid for a few months. Like that price doesn't really change, but now we're seeing the prices change so frequently. And I think we're just in a very special time. I, I don't think this is going to last um, for, for much longer, but what advice do you have to customers? Like, if you want to uh, get a price quotation, do you have to place that order quite 
quickly or more quickly now? Or how long can you hold a price for before it goes up? Or does the price also go down? Like how, how do you view pricing for your customers? Very detailed specification showing, okay, what's the difference on the materials pricing? What's, what's the difference on the labor cost? What's the difference on the exchange rate? We are very open in, in a discussion with customers and you know, they are not working, they are not only working with one supplier, they're working mostly in different products area. And the sense or uh, the situation we explain, they can have hear it from other uh, suppliers also. So very important is to give you know clear information. Um, so for this question, the most important thing I think is that you need to find a long relationship of supplier, not just mm -hmm. a one-time job. If, if, if you always do one-time job, uh, so there is no relationship with the suppliers. Uh, like I do business with your company. Mm. You know, we have been been you know, for 10 years. Even this time I lose, I lose money, but I, I'm, I'm okay. I have earned money from you before. And uh, mm. after, after this year, so next year you will get me money again. You mm. will get to, to have uh, profits again. And I will let you know that uh, I have no money on, on this order. I will let you know, I will, I will tell you, but uh, I will not raise the price if mm. it is uh, in my ability. But if it is over my ability, like if it is 30% or 40% over, so I will tell you, I will, I will rise a little and I will maybe I will tell you if we can share with half a half like this kind. But mm. if it's a new guy to me, okay. The price is rising. If you want order, so raise the price. If you don't want to do, oh, please go. Find the other one. The other one will also tell you the same price. That is, I'm so glad you said that because in, in my content, I always talk about building relationships with your manufacturers and how important yeah. it is. But to hear you say that as well, to be like how yeah. you look at a long-term business relationship. The difference is, you know, in, if it is in Europe, they will have no, this kind of uh, opinion that, uh, uh, but in China, that uh, you know, uh, what we care is uh, uh, we not only care about business, we care about uh, what you are, like um, uh, what what the people look like in your life. I love it, and you know, I think Andrew, you would normally get a lot of customers from the Canton Fair. Every time we go to the Canton Fair, I always come mm -hmm. to your booth to say hello. Always busy with customers, and then like you know, we'll, we'll have a laugh, we'll have a joke, go out for dinner, we build that relationship, we do more business, and visit your factory. But mm -hmm. with people not being able to visit China in the last couple of years, the business mm -hmm. has moved online, and you would always find new customers at the Canton Fair. But now the Canton Fair not being open, you can't. It's harder to find those new customers. So what what's been your strategy? Do you do you still look to find new customers, or do you go on to Alibaba now? And like, if you are on Alibaba, how do you differentiate yourself from the bad suppliers? Because you're one of the top suppliers, but there's also really bad suppliers on Alibaba as well. Like, how do you tell the customer? I'm actually a really good factory. I've been in business for a long time. I have the right quality control. I have the right machinery. I have the right certificates. Like, what? Wh how are you looking at the sort of um, online business for attracting new customers? Well, first of all, like us, and uh, we 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 both online sale and uh, in Canton Fair sale also. Uh, what uh, we doing on Alibaba is uh, we have uh, when I begin to my business. I start uh, on Alibaba at that, that time. So uh, we are about uh, uh, 10 years old uh, factory on, on the website. So they, they will show you how, how, how old uh, the company it is uh, on the website. Also, mm -hmm. you can find uh, uh, with uh, their name to, to check how old the company is. Mostly, if the company is, you, is, is very new, you need to be uh, careful. But mm. if it uh, uh, like 10 years, uh, you do not need too much worry. And you need to see how many sales it is uh, per year. Uh, mm. If it is uh, over 10,000, uh, over, over like, uh, uh, let's see, 10 million one year. So you can see, oh, this, this company is good. It's okay. It's fitable. But it is just uh, not so much sale. So need, you need to think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the uh, the Contact is very easy. You can have some time, you can have WeChat or like uh, us, we can have Zoom. 
to have a video shoot. Let let him take the video mm. to come over the factory mm. and let you know how the factory tea is like. So you will let uh, you will you will get uh, uh, knowledge of uh, his the company. Yeah. Mm. Most uh, but sometimes even this is not his factory. He will said, "Oh, this is my factory," and he take a. Uh, so you need to try again and again to test yeah. if he is do or not. Uh, like not just one time thing. So like this time, I want to see one, and then uh, uh, I I want to check uh, if the, the product online is good. Could you go and have a video together with me? If mm. he is always uh, refuse, or just uh, just uh, answer you one one time, and the next time he do not want to to answer you. Said his problem. He's not in the factory. Mm. Yeah, that's a very good point. And you, you know, it, it's interesting because like you joining your, your business in in two thousand nine, like you brought that like young energy, and I think you already knew a lot about you know e commerce and sales going online. And then you were very visionary to think, right? I need to put my factory online into Alibaba because many big factories were not doing that because they were always getting in the new business from Canton Fair. They were always having customers visit their factory, so they were always thinking, I don't need to go on Alibaba. It's only the smaller business which go there but actually the way the market has shifted now everyone relies on online platforms like Alibaba so if you've been established there for more than 10 years that really really helps you um, and then so I think you've always had that vision in terms of like where the market is going and then where do I need to be and then you're there before it actually happens so that was great insight um, on, on your part and um, Canton Fair is something that I love so much in China. That's where we first, we met for the first time and we uh, have seen each other over 20 times over the last 10 years at these different Canton Fairs. D do you miss it? Has that affected your business? Because you've not been able to attend the last four Canton Fairs either. And that's where we would go and, and develop new products. And how has that impacted your business? Because we have the virtual Canton Fair, which is it's just not the same. You know, it's helpful, but it's not the same. Um, but are you seeing now less new customers come in or are your existing customers still placing business? Like what, what was the impact of the, the Canton Fair not being on? Uh, How has that affected your business? Yeah, the real Canton Fair is do can help me to know the new client. Also, mm meet with the old friend as you. Mm. But the online business, mm, you know, it's quite simple. Customer just uh, see the pictures, they find you, they even do not know who you are. So the question they ask is quite simple, price MOQ. So really the order deal is not mm, easy, but mm. Canton, they can see your products. They can see your factory. They can see you some license. Face-to-face -face talk makes things easier and the order happen faster. Yeah. How, how would you recommend for customers to communicate with their supplier in the best way? Because most people normally just chat to the supplier on Alibaba. And I always tell people, you know, what we just talked about, build up that relationship, get on WeChat, send photos, send videos. You know, we have a lot of conversations on WeChat you know, if I'm like dating someone, I'll tell you, oh, hey, like this is what's going on. And, you know, we just talk about it. And then like, if we want to talk about business, then we'll do that as well. But at least we have that informal conversation um, in in WeChat as well. But you can also communicate with your suppliers through uh, email, through Zoom. Like how, how do you like to communicate with customers and where do you see, I think you just mentioned like WeChat video and going to see the factory is a way for a customer to get really good insight. But wh where do you see like customers best communicating with, with manufacturers? Is it email, is it Alibaba, is it Zoom, is it WeChat? Is it all of the above? Uh, what I think is uh, the way is not uh, most important. Uh, you know, now you can buy email, you, have, you can buy QQ, you can buy WeChat, WhatsApp, uh, FaceTime, all these things. Uh, just uh, one thing is that uh, I think face-to-face -face is most important, uh, that mm -hmm. you can look his eyes to tell you if he is true or not. Yeah. That's most important. So some with some of my most important customers, I always have a video video uh, conversation with them together. Sometimes we have, have meeting, uh, we will book a time to have meeting like us uh, 
what we do right now to show and uh, you know like zoom now is very easy to use you can share your your screen to him together to 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 find something together and to create something together design or find some planes schedules all is easy so what i think think is uh, uh, at least to talk not only by email email is too slow now uh, what we we are going is more convenience like wechat or uh, if you are, uh, are not a very big customer and are not always playing orders and uh, we are familiar with that, that, that ways, it's okay, you just play order and we will do everything. But if you are a guy just uh, doing uh, just a cooperation with a new supplier and you need to frequently to contact him and to, to talk to him to find if he is uh, serious, I love it. So it's not exactly where you communicate, it's how you communicate and face-to-face and yeah. -face, uh, it being the most important. And I 100% agree as well. Now, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, manufacturing and stuff like that. I'm curious to get your opinion on manufacturing outside of China, because a lot of people are looking at Mexico, they're looking at Bangladesh, they're looking at Turkey, they're looking at India. And like, in my mind, China is still the place to manufacture because of that high skilled workforce, the fact that you have scale, the fact that if you need 10,000 units of something, you can get that manufactured in, you know, 45 days, the infrastructure in terms of the transport, like the packaging companies there, the attention to quality, having an idea of how many years that factory has been in business, you know, having your payment protected through Alibaba trade assurance. There's so many advantages of sourcing from China. There are challenges happening right now, and that's why people are looking to other countries. But from your customers and from your perspective of e-commerce, are you seeing your customers go to other countries and then coming back to China? Or are they trying other countries and, and failing? Or are they trying other countries and is it working? Like, what are you seeing in terms of production outside of China? Maybe you can find some something uh, much simple in in like India or what, but uh, you know, China, it is, a, a, you know, a treated market. It is a, not a young market or you can, you, you do not, not need to do anything by yourself. You know, uh, all custom, uh, uh, what you want to do is to save your time and save your money, both. Uh, like in India, maybe you can save some of your money, but uh, you will lose a lot of your time. Uh, if you want to buy a, let's see, if you want to uh, buy a, to a tower, like what we do, uh, so you need to find a tower factory. Then the tower factory is not only enough. You need to find a zipper factory. You need to find a backpack factory to compare packing factory. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like the other place, I don't know if they are like convenience like China because we can ask a supplier to come to here uh, this afternoon and send me a sample of uh, uh, a box or what. But in there, maybe it will be uh, like a long time and uh, they cannot find, uh, you know, sometimes it is a chain and uh, you need a lot of things from different uh, place and like a uh, different place to, to compare a final price of products to your customers. That is not mm -hmm. only one thing. So you, you need to to think uh, how they are their capabilities. Yeah, capabilities. Yeah. Actually, the other countries, maybe you know, they like Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. You know, they have a lot of India have a lot of workers and uh, young workers. Oh, yeah, Vietnam also. Um, so uh, there will be a lot of conditions. But one thing is very important is. Uh, I think we still need to be in China. I, I, I still manage these uh, factories here because I also travel a lot to India, to Vietnam, Viet, uh, Myanmar, Cambodia, uh, Philippines also. And one of the difference compared to the people uh, here and there, uh, I think Chinese people working much more harder mm. Mm -hmm. uh, in the factory side. The workers work much more harder and the efficient is much more efficient. This one. Second is the full industrial chain. For example, if I, if I want to produce a shoe or a backpack, I have always access with zippers, weapons, everything within me 
or Ho China. If you go to Vietnam, you cannot even find a zipper. And uh, I know two, three years ago, some big customers started to produce shoes in Bangladesh. But again, they have to purchase all the materials and sets here in Chenzhou, ship there and produce their own because they don't have all the supply chain. So for some big customers, it's okay if they have big orders from a very, uh, like a basic style of the thing. But if they want to produce very new designs, changeable, very fast, they cannot because they don't have that kind of accessories ready there. And um, so I think in five years, we are still okay, strong. And I don't know after that, <laughs> the world is changing very fast. I think nowadays, very important is to work very hard because the challenge is not five years later. The challenge is right now. In the normal days, we need to make a long-term plan because you know the challenge is for the future. But right now, it's different. We don't make a very long-term plan. We make we have to focus on the current situation and to overcome the difficulties and the challenge right now. Because the challenge is now, it's not the future. We know the future will be better than today because now it's hard time. We have to overcome this challenge and difficulties. So we look to the future. And um, what, what I will say is that in, in five years time, wherever we are, I know that you will still be at the top because having worked with you for like the last 12 years, you always adapt, you're always thinking of the new way, you're always staying ahead of the curve, you're always developing the best products. Um, you know, in the in the time that we've worked together, I've even been to, I think, three or four different offices, you're always moving to bigger premises, bigger office, bigger factory, more workers, more customers. Uh, and on top of that, you know, you and your team, uh, Hedy as well, got a good team behind you, and um, you work very, very hard. And, and I think like, me, me spending so much time in China, to, to your point about the Chinese workers work harder than any other countries that you've seen, I really second that as well. And I believe that I have a really strong work ethic and I work hard, but I think that's because I've spent so much time in China and I've learned from Chinese companies how hard that they work to achieve good results. And that's been um, a, a part of me now as well. So, you know, I, I think, Andrew, you're, you're very visionary. You understand a lot about, you know, the the e-commerce market, the manufacturing market. And I think like when I was in your office, uh, I think maybe four or five years ago, I was really impressed. You just got this new office. You built this massive sales team and in your office, it might be the one you're sitting in right now. And you had this like really nice massage chair by the window. Um, yeah. And then, you know, the big glass office, it was really cool. And I was really impressed with your growth. Um, but you were also looking at um, selling within the Chinese market in the domestic market as well on Chinese websites like uh, Taobao, Tmall, JD, stuff like that. And out of interest, how, how is the situation and how is the growth of the domestic Chinese market versus your export market? Are you export? Because 10 years ago, 100% of your business would have been exporting to other countries in the world. But now, what is the percentage of what you're doing for the China market versus the export market? You know, China market is... Um much more competitive than the others because all everyone is supplier, everyone can make things. So mm. here, uh, if you are foreigner, you want to do Taobao, I will suggest you not to do bra, not to do. Yeah. Uh, but here, uh, the marketing is growing, yes. Uh, like before, maybe we have a 100% is, uh, is uh, uh, go to a uh, um, board, but uh, right now, like uh, 10 to 20,000 uh, percent will be uh, inside. So, so about 80% is export and about 20% is manufacturing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Spending a bit of time in the, in the United States during COVID, I saw that like, you know, if you go to hotels, they maybe have like half the number of employees. If you go to a restaurant, the service levels are poor because the restaurant is still open, but they've reduced the number of employees. So their costs are lower, they're employing fewer people, but you know, that's one way of improving their margins. But from the, from the production side, um, and labor is such an important part of the product, especially what you guys do in backpacks, because it's very much cut and sew quality control. You can't just remove half the labor 
uh, and expect the same results. So like, have you noticed, have there been any technological improvements in production, like in materials, in machinery, in molds, where factory bosses have got together and said like, look, we need to figure this out. We need to get lower costs, like anything yes. on the production side. Yes, yes in a lot of changes in the last few years, if you came back to China again, come back to China again, you will see this point. Every factory is trying to reduce the part of labor cost. They try to use less and less uh, mass power. Um, you know, we talk about something big like Fushikon, uh, which is the biggest uh, you know, manufacturing for iPhone, iPads. They use robots instead of hire more workers. They, you know, because robots can work day and night, no problem. It, it is a big, big investment, but it can use it for a longer time. So it's more economic to use robots. And coming to our big uh, uh, factories, of course, we cannot use robots, but we try to save the labor cost, for example, from the gold, you know, when you open the paper carton, we used to use, you know, hand drawing, and now it's all computerized, even print out. And all the cutting used to be a hand cut. Now it's everything molding. We have to have many molding machines. You know, every part, because molding, you know, first it's very accurate. The second is you don't make mistakes. And you have you use less people. And from the, the uh, sewing part, many factories using bigger area of computerized uh, sewing machines. So all the square, all the big uh, stitchings, we use computer uh, machine to sew in. And then where just wrapping up like where do you see Chinese factories and Chinese manufacturing and Chinese production uh, in the next five years you know in the last like two years we've seen a lot of change and even in the last 10 years when 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 we started working together I've seen a lot of change as well in the country um in the production in the prices um now where where do you see it going in the next five years what, what anything people should be aware of or are, are we getting more into like robotics are we going to see costs come down a little bit um are we going to see like more and more products get developed like what where do you see the the chinese manufacturing uh market going in the next five years uh what i think is uh, in the next five years uh, china's products will be uh, you know not so cheap they will have uh, some uh, good brand like Xiaomi, like the other things. Uh, is all always uh, going to be brand, and uh, with uh, not so much expensive brand, but cheap brand, uh, and uh, you know, uh, like something it is easy to do. If it is a, a t-shirt with nothing, just a t-shirt. So that's kind of for products we will go to Vietnam or we will go to like uh, India, like this market. But China, they will, uh, we will still have something uh, a little more complicated things to do. Yeah, like this and uh, much more creative things will be in China, but uh, it is uh, just a simple and uh, a, a very big uh, order with simple things that things will be moved to the other countries uh, which is uh, uh, use uh, much cheaper levels like that kind so that, that that's a great point so the more like creative products the more technical products will be developed in china but the more yeah. basic products will go to other countries and it's interesting because maybe about 20 15 12 years ago it was like the more technical and creative products were being made in Europe, you know, Germany, UK, USA, yeah. and the cheaper products were made in China. But now it's yeah. kind of transitioned to now the more technical products are being made in China. It's a cycle. <laughs> yeah, because move. it's move. Yeah, China have invested a lot, not only in like manufacturing capabilities, but in terms of like um, AI capabilities and and knowledge and really understanding. Um, where the market is going and what are the requirements and you know with this rising labor cost rising material cost they've had to get more sophisticated in terms of their product development but I wherever you see cheaper products it's always where you have a cheaper workforce and to your point when 10 years ago it used to be a factory worker was a hundred dollars a month and now it's a thousand dollars a month well in 10 years if the labor cost is is increased by 10 times well so will the cost of your products as well um, the other thing is that uh, the robot will be used in China a lot. So, the, the, 
there's a rather automatic machine to mm. use to get less lower cost because the mm. cost is high. Yeah. Mm. And uh, like uh, uh, this kind of AI to use to these machines, that will be a good thing, I think. In five mm -hmm. years, maybe 10 years, that will be, uh, you know, in our life, I think. It's interesting because even being in China a couple of years ago and going to factories, I could see already that like, you know, robots and machinery and AI were being implemented in like the sample process. So if we have an idea for like a backpack, for example, we do the paper uh, and then you, by robot, the, the robot sketches, uh, writes all the dimensions of the paper pattern, then they cut that paper pattern and then they put the fabric on top and then they cut the fabric and then you use that fabric to make the backpack. So I have a video of that somewhere, but I was always like, even two or three years ago, I saw that and that really, really impressed me in terms of, well, hey, the robot can actually make the pattern of the backpack. But now I think it'll be even much more sophisticated. Um, well, Andrew, it's been an absolute pleasure and you've shared so much great information uh, with myself and with the audience. I always learn a lot uh, when I speak with you as well. And I always really enjoy our conversations. Uh, and, and hopefully I can see you here soon uh, in Dubai. And when, when China opens up, I'll be on that first plane uh, and, and I'll see you out there as well. Do you, do you have any sort of uh, last remarks or closing remarks that you want to share with the audience? Anything to no. be excited about? Any, anything people should look I wish one good. I wish yeah. everyone good. Keep oh. safe and uh, keep rich. <laughs> awesome. I, Andrew, thank you so much. Uh, send the best to your family and I look forward to seeing you in China soon. And thank you so much for, for jumping on. Thank you. Thank you for your invite. Bye-bye. All the best. All right. Take care, Andrew. See you. Bye-bye. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed those interviews with Jim, Andrew and Eddie. If you did like that type of content, then let me know in the comments below and I will make more videos like this. I will interview more suppliers. I will ask some more questions. And if there are any questions that you have for suppliers, let me know in the comments down below as well so I can shoot another episode quite quickly. If you do have any questions for me as well, I do go through all the comments. I do read them all myself and I do try to reply to every single comment. So if I can help you if you're in your supply chain in any way, let me know in the comments down below and I hope you enjoyed this episode. And remember, I do want to see you in Las Vegas. This will be a massive, massive event, the biggest one of 2022. So I want to see you there. Gary V wants to see you there. The discount code is here and the link in the description for the event is down below. Thanks and I'll see you guys on the next video.